Hi and welcome to the first video of the Administering System Configuration track. In this video, we'll explore understanding the system configuration. Now, the system configuration video is split into two parts. This is part one. Now, to access the system configuration, you will click on this administration menu item and from there access the system configuration. Now the system config settings provide control over some core functions of PPO. They are typically set up and configured during an implementation and should be stable post implementation. You will also see the system configuration pages divided into different sections. The first section we are going to look at is this client and contact information. Now the first field here says client name. Currently it reads Acme Limited which you see here in the browser tab and which you see right at the top in the browser window. I'm going to change this to ABC Limited and once I've changed it, click on the Submit icon. You will now see that the browser tab has updated to the new client name and right at the top in the browser window it's also been updated. If I now return back to the system configuration, I can change it back to Acme Limited. When I now submit, it will instantly be changed back to its original name. So within the system configuration, why is that client name important? Now firstly, it personalizes your PPO instance and secondly, when a new user is added and they receive their welcome email from PPO, the client name is also shown on there. Now the project office email address is used in PPO's email events. So when setting up those email events, the project office can be somebody and it can be a recipient of those email notifications. The next field is the billing email address. That is simply the person who will receive the PPO invoices on a monthly basis. The next section is the planning settings. Now PPO uses the number of standard hours in the resource planning calculations. If you want to find out more about the resource planning calculations, feel free to watch the video on the resource allocation reporting. Also note that when adding the standard hours on your system config, you can also only add full hours. Do not add seven and a half hours or eight and a half hours, either enter seven hours or eight hours. The next setting in your system configuration relates to the time entries. Now the first setting here allows users to send their time entries for approval. When this setting is set to on or true, the approval request tick box and the approval status columns will appear on the time entry maintenance page. So let me quickly show you that. You will notice I've also opened two tabs here at the top. The second one I'm going to use to demonstrate to you what those changes are that we are making. So if I access the second tab and I click on the home page and I click on the my time entries icon, you will notice this approval request and status columns. They will now appear on the time entries maintenance page because here within my system configuration I have said that I want approvals on my time entries. If I uncheck this and I submit and I return back to my second tab and I simply refresh the page, you will notice that the two last columns relating to the approval have now disappeared. If I return back here to my first tab and access the system configuration again, the next setting here says allow timesheets to be linked to another activity. Now this setting allows users to record time against an activity called other. So this means the time entries does not relate to a task, a issue or a risk. So currently that option is selected. So if I access my second tab and I note here on the project level, you will see this add other option. So when the setting is on, this add or the option will be available. When the setting is off, we will not see this option. So if I return to the first tab and I disable or I uncheck this option and I submit and I access my second tab and I simply refresh the page, you will notice that that option has disappeared and I can now only book my time against tasks, issues or risks on that project. If I return to the first tab and access the system configuration again, the third setting is then shown. Now the third option shows the global default for the billable field. Now the system administrator can specify whether the default option for all the time entries should be billable. 
or non-billable. So if it's checked, it's billable. If it's unchecked, it's non-billable. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to access the time entries again and note this billable option here. Currently it's checked. If I go and uncheck it and I submit and I refresh my time entries page, because I have now already booked time against this record, it still shows as billable. But if I go and link another item, you will see that the default value is now not billable. Also note that the user has the option of setting a user preference, which will then override this global default that you've just set up. For more information about that, you can just access our knowledge base articles. Now return back to the system configuration. The last setting here enables you to add more entities on your time entries maintenance page. So by default you can book time against issues, risks and tasks on the project. But maybe you want to also add time against scope changes or documents so you could select those entities and I'm just using documents and scope changes as an example then submit and if I return to my second tab and I simply refresh here and I want to link another item you will see here that I can now also book time against a document on that project, issue risks and tasks for by default, and then a scope change on that project. I'm going to now return back to the system configuration and look at the other fields. So now we've looked at all the fields that make part of the time entry settings. The next section here relates to the other settings. Now the first setting here is the default priority for admin project. Now PPO allows the client to set a default priority value for admin projects. So this allows users to easily filter administrative projects out of their reports and dashboards. Now the admin priority is by default set to 999. So when a project is selected as an admin project, the priority fields on the project's entity will automatically update with a default priority as set up in this section of the system configuration. Now to demonstrate that, I'm going to click on my second tab, access the project list, then click on add project and just simulate that I wanted to add a new project and note the priority field here and the admin project field. If I check this box, do you see that the default priority for this project is now 999 as set up in the system configuration. If I uncheck it, it just goes back to what the default priority is, which is zero before any project is prioritized. Back to my system configuration, the next setting is the task relevance period. Now PPO allows the client to set up a standard reporting period that will mainly affect the project manager dashboard and the upcoming task report. Now these settings ensure that these reports only show items that fall within the specified range. If you report monthly, change it to 30 days. If you report every week, change it to 7 days. If you also want to find out more about how this task relevance period is calculated, feel free to access our FAQs. The next setting here is the default skin. Now the system administrator may specify a default skin or a color scheme to all the users. Now the appearance of PPO can thus be adjusted to match company colors or a company logo, but note that the default skin as set up in the system config can also be again overridden by the user's preference. For part 1 of the video we will stop at the default skin. Please feel free to watch part 2 to understand the rest of the settings that are in the system configuration. Learn more about PPO today by visiting us at projectportfoliooffice.com. PPO, your award-winning project management solution.